Hello everybody. In this video I will talk a bit about the anti-gravity device that I made. And yeah, in the last video I made about it I showed you how to build it and how it works. And some people have still questions so I thought I'd make a video where I explain it a bit of how I understand it works. So let me start off with a small introduction. This is just a Heilberg array that focuses the field strong on one side and on the other. And I've taped it to a parabolic copper reflector that I made just out of a copper sheet. You will see in my earlier video how I made it. So this gives us yeah, anti-gravity like effects. It does not float or levitate by itself. It will just drop to the ground like any other object. It has no battery or coil or anything to power it. It's just the magnet array itself that creates this effect in combination with the parabolic copper reflector that we have here. And if you take it like this and just move it against any object or the ground, doesn't matter what material this is made of. Of course, metal would react stronger, but it works with every material. Because, yeah, everything is magnetoreactive. But I actually don't know how much this has an influence on this. So, anyways, if you just move it like this, you get, it feels like, yeah, pushing and a soft pillow or it's just a slight resistance that you feel when you do this. So I thought about this on yeah, why this could happen. So I also built many others of this arrays that you see here. And I have oriented these arrays in different arrangements. Most importantly will be the first three here, or basically this and this one I will talk about in this video. So um, the device that I showed you has this kind of magnet arrangement. I have another video where I show exactly how you can make this arrays and how to arrange everything if you want to know that. So I won't go into detail with this right now. But just to show you, this arrangement would be this one. And then I've made another one. And here I've made it so with this array so that the field is focused to the outside and not just in one direction. And to show you what I mean with this, I will take my field viewer that you see here. And here I have just the same arrangement like here. So I I view this from the weak side, it looks like this. And if I view it from the strong side, it looks like this. And if you view it from the side, like this, you can clearly see, I'm holding the array so you can see a part of it, you can clearly see how the field forms stronger on one side than on the other. It's not a very symmetrical shape, as you could say. And now we move on to the next array. This is this array. So this focuses the field to the outside, like you see here. So it looks, if I flip it around, it looks the same on this side, of course. And if you view it from the side, you will see it is an even field that stretches out in a yeah, symmetrical way in each direction, but more to the sides. And just to show you, this is the same array that I just showed you. So let me move on to my thoughts on how I think this could work. I will just place it like this, so you can still see something. So, 
Yeah, it's actually reversed. This array belongs to this, <laughs> this to this. But keep that in mind. So with this array here, um, we have a field that is kind of like shaped or shaped like this. And yeah, this would basically be just the side view. If you hold the array like this and you would slice through it and you view the field from the side, you will get an image. If I show you again, whoops, this was the wrong array, like this. You will see how the field forms down to just one side and yeah, more, more to the bottom than on the top. So we basically shifted the magnetic field outwards down here or in one direction. And with the next array, that is this one, you will see again the field looks like this and this is viewed from the side. So it is a symmetrical field, so um, on the top and bottom you see it doesn't extend very far, but on the sides it does extend further away. So all the magnetism is focused to the outside circular pattern of course. So yeah, this gives us different effects on how these devices behave. If we take this one for example, that has the field focused stronger to one side, the effect is still the strongest compared to this one. It is much more noticeable and yeah, you kind of just need to hold it in a slight angle and move it down doesn't even need to be on right to a surface, it works in air, but then I would get higher than what the camera can show right now. But yeah, this is the device that works the best and that I recommend. This would be this arrangement of the magnets that gives you this field. It looks like this and this is the weak side. So with the next array, I've arrange the magnets like this to give us a field like this as you can see and yeah it also has similar effects if I do this but it behaves yeah let's say a bit different it is when I just drop it straight down I almost feel nothing but if I then come closer to an object or the ground or yeah anything, um, yeah the effect is, I don't know how to describe it the best. It is like if you want to tilt it like this, it's like with a surfboard <laughs> in water. I don't know how to describe it any better, but the effects are different that you feel. It's still this anti-gravity effect, meaning that it's some repulsion force that you feel against the object when you move it, but in, in, in different angles. So this is um, basically, I think, because of the different field shape that you get. Of course, you have a copper reflector parabolic on top that will influence the whole field I don't know how much, but in movement, I think it has an effect. So I'm actually not too sure what the copper reflector does and or what its exact purpose is. But yeah, the effect is stronger with the copper reflector. You can do the same with just the array. And yeah, if you're really sensitive to how fields align with Earth's magnetic field, for example, if you take uh, a huge magnet like this, this is a 7 centimeter diameter disc magnet, a neodymium one, and if you just hold it like this or this, you will feel the Earth's magnetic field. You will see like quite clearly how it, or you feel quite clearly how it wants to align with Earth's magnetic field, and therefore I could also tell you that this is um, South Pole and this is North Pole. And yeah, this is with huge strong magnets the case. But if you arrange 
just small magnets, these are also strong, these are N52 grade. Make sure you get strong magnets, so the effect is stronger. But what actually uh, makes the effect is, I think, that the field itself, uh, that is extra of the magnets, is changed in its shape, so it's forced in one direction, and this is what gives us the effect. This is maybe not the whole or complete or 100% correct explanation, but this is how far I understand it so far. And yeah, I hope this answered some questions for you and gives you a bit to think about. If you want to, yeah, to go into real details and get more full explanation, I recommend you watch Ken Wheeler's videos on these devices. And yeah, he explains it more deeply. So, yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day and goodbye.